Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and good morning to all of you that have come to gather on this another great day that the Lord has made, which we shall rejoice and be glad. I want to first of all thank all of you for your well wishes for my birthday, celebrating my 52nd birthday on Wednesday. I am excited to be able to live, to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you for all of you that have uh, sent out well wishes, you have sown into my life, you have given, uh, thank you. You don't have to be as kind as you are, but because you have the love of God in your heart, that causes you to be kind to other people. And I'm excited about it, and I thank God for you. Thank you for all of you that are tuning in on this wonderful day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I and you shall rejoice in it and be glad. What a wonderful week this month, last Sunday of the year, church, last Sunday of the year. Wow, this year is gone. and We're embarking upon another uh, month or next week. We're going to do some exciting things on next week. Uh, some great things are happening for uh, me, and I'm excited about it. And I thank God that you are a part of what God is doing. Transitioning is not always uh, uh, easy, but uh, it's necessary. It is necessary. And I thank God for you that continue to support, continue to show love, and continue to, to uh, allow this ministry to come to you every single uh, Sunday, giving you the word of the Lord, teaching you biblical principles that would help you uh, for the rest of your life. And we are excited and we thank God for you. I have exciting an exciting teaching for you today. If you want to be a part of what the Lord is doing and what he is saying uh, on today concerning mind control. So I want you to be a part of this and I want you to hear what the Lord is saying uh, concerning what it is that, that uh, we keep pondering and keep on our minds so that we make sure that we are in that place that we need to be in uh, as it relates to our walk with God and to be excited about it in Jesus' name. I'm asking that you will share this uh, share this on your uh, social media platform so that somebody uh, that is watching uh, uh, yours truly, that is the uh, Dr. Bishop Patrick L. Usher Sr., uh, to be a part of this teaching and to thank God yet again uh, for his word. I want to do uh, something and lift this up in the word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, uh, the creator of all mankind, we thank you, we love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, and most of all, we thank you for life, health, and strength. And I thank you for every viewer, everyone that will watch this program, that will tune in. I thank you that you will continue to bless their home, bless their lives, and all that they do, continue to have your way. Bless them that they may be blessed, God, and all that they do. Heal them if they're sick. Take care of whatever need that they have lacking in their lives, God. You are the God who is our stronghold. You are our deliverer. You are our battle axe, and we love you, and we appreciate you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you. For you are my God, you are my Savior, and you are my soon-coming King. We thank you now. We bless you now in Jesus' name. And all the glad hearts send up likes and love and say amen. Uh, again, I want to deal with this teaching on today because I think it's so very important that we know uh, what the Word of God says concerning our thoughts and the way uh, that we think. I will be in the book of Philippians. Uh, it will be the second chapter and the fifth verse, a familiar uh, read scripture, and I want to read in your hearing to give some understanding and some clarity as we studied uh, the Word of of God. Again, I am in the scriptures, Philippians, the second chapter, and it is the fifth, fifth verse. Starts off by saying like this, let this mind be in you. All right. This is the latter clause of what Paul is talking about as it relates to uh, thinking so big of yourself or having to boast and brag about what you know, who you know, and what you have. Paul says, listen, the Philippian church, and I am telling all those that are listening to me and watching me, blessings to you, Brother Greg, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
And I want to deal with this, what's controlling your mind? What's controlling your mind? And I think this is so very important that we understand that what, the, what Paul is simply saying is, let this attitude be in you, which, is, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this kind of thinking, that is to be humble, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Let this kind of thinking sober, having a mind of forgiveness, having a mind of love and grace and mercy. Let this kind of thinking be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Also, he says, let this way of thinking, this lifestyle, constantly thinking, having the same thoughts as it relates to Christianity and your walk with God how you treat people, how do you think about life. Let this way of thinking uh, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And lastly, let this attitude, as I've said, this attitude, developing this attitude where it becomes who you are. Um, you know how somebody says, why do you have an attitude? You got a bad attitude. You have a good attitude. What's wrong with you? It is because of your actions that depicts that something is wrong with your mood or something is going on in your mindset. And so we should always have this mind of Christ that we always think on, think on those things that appear, that are just, that is of a good reporting. Tell us to think on these things. Gives us a list of doing that. But it's interesting to know that Christ wants us to have the same mindset that he had. Let this mind, let this attitude, let this way of thinking, let this kind of thinking be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I need you also to understand that uh, our today will soon become our past. So Jesus teaches us in Matthew, the sixth chapter, uh, not to take take thought for tomorrow. You can't worry about tomorrow, which will deplete, maybe control your attitude with how you think and how you um, rationalize with things because you're so concerned and more concerned about tomorrow and what possibly could happen on tomorrow. Jesus says, take no thought, give no thought. Don't give too much attention on tomorrow. We know tomorrow is coming. We want to wake up to see tomorrow. But don't let that be a governing tool as it relates to how you view things and see things on tomorrow. But today, 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 somebody say today, today, you need to make sure that the things that you think on, the things you ponder on, the things that you meditate on are healthy for your environment today. Today, make sure that the thoughts that you have today can give you a great sense of well-being, a great sense of healing, a great sense of knowing that all things work together, no matter how bad it is, for the good of the people of God who love God and who are called according to his purpose. I think it's important that we understand that. I think it's important that we have that type of mindset because today, I said it again, today will soon become our past. And so uh, I want to deal with this uh, for the few moments that I have to share. Blessings to you, Pastor uh, Berger. I keep saying that we're going to connect. We need to connect. And uh, do some ministry. Blessings to you, Sister Rosalind Jackson, as well. Uh, my family up in New York. The theory of subliminal thinking. I want to deal with this uh, for a little bit. Uh, that is the theory of subliminal thinking. We have heard of subliminal thinking. Those of you that have sat in particular offices, like uh, in your psychiatrist's office, or have sat in the, the moods or settings of meditations or you are doing yoga or any of those type of things uh, there's always a theory that is being taught among the people now that is the theory of sublimin subliminal thinking and this 
subliminal thinking, all this theory is uh, that of a mind control. It is of a mind control. It sets things in motion as it relates to the way you think. So subliminal thinking sort of takes over your mind. And when we deal with that, I think it's important that we understand that it produces a sensation that redirects your thinking, right? So puts you in a mode of meditation where it redirects your thinking. It actually teaches people, and I see your blessing to you, good morning. It teaches people how they can lose weight, how they can stop smoking, how they can stop gambling how they can have a better life and become a better person, a better people, successfully through using mind control. Now, is, is this wrong? I, I can't per se that this is wrong because you should have a, uh, your mind should be conditioned to do certain things. But when you use any type of theory or technique that takes over your mind to where you are dependent on inner self for healing and breakthrough while replacing the scriptures in which we live by, it can actually be a cult. Yes. Anytime you allow your thoughts to replace the scriptures, to what God says, how God says you should think, it literally becomes a cult. You are inviting demonic activity, spirits, to enter into your thoughts because you are relying on self. If you are not careful, the devil will use these techniques listen to me carefully, to control your mind, to get you to turn away from God's word. And anytime you rely on self-help books and other resources and YouTube messages and all of these messages that are being sent out that has no biblical principle to it, when you start relying on that type of information to change your life, you are inviting other spirits to take control of your mind. Things like hypnosis or Prozac and enchanting tapes is a trap for demonic control. It's witchcraft. It's manipulating. Manipulation. And I'm talking about today what's controlling your mind. If you are using hypnosis and if you're using certain medications, some of you have to take Prozac and certain medications to be able to function. I understand that. But those of you that do that and use these enchanting tapes, it is a, literally a trap for demonic control. It is, again, witchcraft. Anytime you are tapping into the spiritual world and do not invite the presence of God in the midst of your life, you are giving a foothold and a door opening for demonic activity. It is Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Let me get it. Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the 20. Uh, seven verse says it on this why neither give place to the devil give no place to the devil so when Paul talks about uh, anger and not allowing the sun to go down on your wrath and having forgiveness in your heart to make sure you get things right with your brothers and sisters read that it feeds the fourth chapter and you'll get some understanding with this blessings to you McCarthy blessings to you uh, sister chestnut my sister blessings to all of you listen you need to understand that anytime you let the sun go down on your anger and you're upset and you're festering within your mind you're giving place you're giving control all over to the devil.
Anytime you're allowing hypnosis and all of these different enchantings and all of these things that we do that we put under the heading of meditation, but it is actually taking control of your thoughts so that you can control and manipulate your body is giving space, giving a place, giving a foothold to the devil. Yes, yes, I want you to hear me on today because we're going into a new year and, and because you're going into the new year, most people want to do new things, but that's the wrong thing to do. Never give place, never give the enemy any type of loophole to get into your life. Well, Bishop Usher, how do he get into that? He get into it when you allow him into your space, in your mind. When you have thoughts that you know are not of God. When you are thinking about things you know that will bring more harm than help. It's given place. That's what happened to Judas. He gave place. He listened to. That's why you got to be careful who you listen to. Who you allow to speak into your life. Judas allowed those religious leaders, that sector of the religious world, to get into his thoughts. Anytime you allow any bishop, apostle, prophet, any religious leader to control the way you think about something. Give you their point of view about something. And it's not biblical. It's not God's way. You are under control. You're giving place and you're giving foothold for the enemy. That is the devil who comes in as a thief. The Bible says the enemy comes, but as a thief to steal, kill, and to destroy, you allow him to come into your mind and to destroy your relationship with God. Don't give any place. Don't give any foothold. Don't allow the enemy to speak into your mind. I need you to understand that any therapy, listen to me carefully, any therapy, either spiritual or naturally, that does not recognize God as the final source of deliverance and a remedy for a better life will not work for you. Any therapy, that does not recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as your source will not work for you. Blessed to you, Dr. Rona. Blessed to you, my sis. Any, I don't care what it is. If it is something that relates to uh, uh, you taking a twist or a turn as it relates to how you think. Any therapy, I'll say it again, either spiritually or naturally that does not recognize God as the final source of deliverance will not work for you. Satan is yet trying to use every means possible to invade your mind. The trickery is to initiate, and that's what therapy, and that's what hypnosis, and that's what uh, subliminal thinking, and that's what all these things are relegated to, it is literally, listen to me carefully, it is a plan and a trick to initiate as much of self as you can to your mind so you would start eventually communicating with your flesh instead of the spirit that God has given you. That's what the technique, technique does. It causes you to communicate with your flesh, with you, your flesh, your body, more than your spirit. You know, the Bible says they that worship the Lord must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is John, the fourth chapter around the 26th verse or so. He says you must worship God in your spirit. But when you are trying to uh, manipulate your mind uh, to be able to lose weight, to be able to stop smoking, drinking, or to stop doing these things that are causing uh, your, you to destroy your life. He simply says, uh, you cannot put no confidence in the flesh. We've been taught that. 
This is Philippians. Let me read this. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Um, is it? No, it's Philippians, uh, the third chapter, and it is the second and the third verse. It says it like this. Beware of dogs because of evil workers. Beware of uh, humiliation. Mutation. Beware of people who come to deceive you. I'm talking about today so you understand what's controlling your mind. What's controlling your mind? He tells us to beware of these things. For we are circumcised who worship God in the spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Put no confidence in your flesh, dear heart. You can't trust yourself. Never say, if that was me, I wouldn't do this, that, and the other. You don't know what you would do if you were put in a predicament that you had to rely on yourself. I know I can't trust myself. I'm dying daily. I'm asking God daily to help me. I'm asking God daily for strength. I'm asking God, pleading with God that these things would take place in my life. And I do it on a daily basis. Can't miss a day. That's all of us. I can't speak for you. But I can speak for me to be able to continue to hear from God, to listen for the voice of God. At any time you rely on any other source than the word of God, you are inviting demonic activity to enter into your life. I need you to hear me today. I need you to hear me today because this is so very important. This is so very important as it relates to your walk with God. This is what uh, uh, Paul is simply telling us. I know you're skillful. I know you have a lot of skills. I know you're, you're highly intelligent. I know you have a lot of things going on in your life. But he simply says it like this. Put no confidence in your skills, in your talent, in your personal uh, capabilities of doing these things. Because it alone can never please God. Your talents, your abilities, your, 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 your ways and means of being able to do what you do in life and get through in life. If it does not have biblical foundational proof, troops, if it does not have the word of God as its final source, you're not dependent on God more than you depended on anything else. You are not pleasing God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Good morning to my sis, Sister Sandra. Good morning. It is impossible to please God. When we understand this, I need you to understand that God has everything under control. He tells us in Zacharias, let me get that. Uh, he tells us in Zacharias, uh, the fourth chapter and the sixth verse it's not by power nor by might but by my spirit said God I read again it's not by our might nor our power but by the spirit of God that we're able to do the things that we do we able to to function the way that we function. The way we, the, the way we're able to move through life the way that we move. And I'm almost done. I have five minutes and I'm done. I'm telling you something. That God has given us his word as his final source. So I want to ask you the question. What's controlling your mind? What are you using? What's controlling your thoughts? What is what 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 do you think about? Huh? What do you think about? Let me tell you what Psalms. You know what what, what Psalms one, uh, and I'll get to it again. Psalms one and one through the fourth verse says it on this wise: Blessed is the man that walketh not 
after the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law that is the scriptures, the word of God. And in the word of God, in the law, doth he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that shall bring forth fruit in his season. But his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. You have another two hours of teaching in you. Doc, you got me fired up listening to you preach just a moment, minute ago. Listen, I need you to understand. Trust me, I'm on my way to that level. I am on my way to that level. Hopefully in February, there'll be some great news. I have a place uh, to be able to uh, house our, our services and our ministry and to light that place up like we know how to. But listen, let me tell you that you are blessed when, first of all, you don't take ungodly advice from ungodly people. You're blessed when you don't be among but stand in the company of sinners. You're also blessed when you're not among that group who pick and scorn other people, getting in conversations about other people, tearing them down. You're blessed that way. Any other way, you're allowing the enemy to enter into your life. Uh, but his delight is in the word of the Lord. He gets his joy, not from tearing down other people, not from going after other people, not from attacking other people or talking about other people, but a blessed man gets his joy from the word of God. And because his joy and, and the word of God is controlling his mind, that's what meditate. Meditate means to churn on. It means to meditate, to rehearse. It means to constantly rehearse, rehearse over, repeat, repeat over again. When you do that with the word of God, meditate on it, rehearse it, churn on it. When you do that day and night, you will become as a tree that's planted by waters. If you've ever been to the Pacific or the Caribbean islands, they have trees, they have large trees trees. Those trees are so large because they are planted by water. Water is their root supply. Causes it to grow and to flourish. And because of that they grow tall and strong. Comparing that to the word of God. The love of the word of God. You would be like that tree that's planted by the rivers that would bring forth fruit in its season. And whatever you do, we will prosper. Whatever you do, your lease won't wither. I don't care whatever season you're in. I don't care what fall, uh, winter, spring, summer. It doesn't matter. Your leaf will not wither. Your life will not wither. Your substance will not wither. And everything you put your hands to do, you will prosper. Listen to what I'm saying today in my closing. Whatever you do in life will prosper when you use the word of God as your final source so that it can again control your mind, control the way you think. Somebody say, well, I don't want Christianity. I don't want the Bible. I don't want preaching to control the way I think. I do. I do. Yeah, because if it does not control the way I think, something or somebody else will. I want the word of God to control. I want to have the mind of Christ. I want that same attitude. I want that same kind of thinking. I want that same way of thinking that Jesus had to be in my mind. Are you following me today? Send up some hearts and likes if you're with me. If you understand it. If you're getting something out of this teaching, and I'm done. You're getting something out of this teaching. Send some hearts and likes up. Because I want 
I don't want my mind to heal me. I want the word of God to heal me. <laughs> because if my mind healed me, I'm dependent on my flesh and it keep causing me to be sick. Hallelujah. Brother Willie, bless it to you. Got to get down there and preach for you, Doc. I want, Pastor Willie Brown, that is, I want the word of God to be my final conclusion. I want the word of God to be everything that I need. Because if the word of God, if I obey the word of God, not only would I be healed, I also have breakthrough, deliverance. I also have finances. I also have wealth. I also would be, uh, Lord, anointed and appointed by God, used, chosen by God, because I depend on his word. I'm serious, Pastor Brown. I'll come give you a Sunday. Let me know which Sunday you want. I'll come. And, uh, and let's bless your house in Jesus' name. Listen, I just want you to be encouraged today and to be blessed today. It's still snowing. Uh, actually, we just got a snow here in Winston-Salem on, on Friday. It snowed about, about two weeks off and on. Uh, snow and ice is still on the ground. That's the reason why it looks so bright outside of my uh, office window because uh, it is so snowy. Uh, but I'm grateful and I'm thankful that God continues to give us what we need just when we need it so that we can live as God has blessed us. And you see people are still driving in there and driving out there. I love my view. I love this view. I love it. If I build a church, I'm going to make the back window open so that uh, the people that are driving by can see some people come in. Uh, they see some people walk past my, my home uh, while they're walking their animals dog or whatnot and uh, they stop sometimes and look and sometimes they ask me what's going on because they see me interacting uh, here uh, social media and I'm thankful and I'm grateful for it and I'm excited about what God is doing thank you mom this is my mom I know I call I don't call a lot of people mom these days I used to call everybody mom I don't call everybody mom because everybody that say that they're, they're your mom really not your mom uh, how some people treat and uh, if you some of you that call other people mom the way they treat you Lord no matter no telling how they treat their own child if they consider you as being mom. But anyway anyhow my mom is on thank you I love you so much mom you and uh, dad thank you always for your support your love your care I'm here today celebrating 52 years because I had two people who loved each other enough uh, to not destroy me but to have me and thank God for that in uh, Jesus' name. All right, I am done, completely done. And I, I want to, first of all, thank God again uh, for your word, God. I thank you for your instructions. I thank you for giving us what we need just when we need it so that we'll be able to live free uh, from any bondage of fear, God. Thank you for controlling our minds. We want you to control our minds, the way we think and how we function and what we do. We're grateful and we thank you. We love you, God, and we honor you. We give you all the praise, give you all the glory for all that happens, that is to happen. We thank you right now. I bless and I pray for every person that's watching me now, everyone that would view this broadcast, this teaching. I pray for them that you would continue to bless their lives, that you would allow your presence to be in their home, that you would, oh God, be their final source their strength that they would have everything that they have and I speak against lack I speak against fear I speak against doubt for you oh God have not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind and I thank you right now that they are blessed and I speak blessings into their homes I speak blessings in their family and everywhere they go that is in Jesus name we pray and we thank you God amen and a man right again i want to thank all of you that continues to give and to sow into our lives and say so into our ministries we thank god for you and we continue to pray for you as you continue to pray for us those of you that are, uh, are my a part of my network thank you your tithing thank you uh, for that those of you that need to connect with a ministry certainly this is a ministry that will bless your entire life 
And uh, so many, I'm telling you, I'm not just saying this, but so many wonderful things are going to come through this ministry and you want to be a part of it. And I'm thankful and I'm grateful for it, for what is God, God is going to do. So continue to give, continue to sow. That is uh, dollar sign, Bishop Pete Usher. Thank you again for all of my birthday love. Those of you that's watching me say, oh, I forgot I should have sent something. Well, it's not too late. I'm 52 years old, so a $50 gift, and God will bless you indeed. Thank you again. Thank you again. You can give it right to that cash app for the ministry. Everything goes into the same so that the ministry can continue to go forth. It takes finances to do what we do, not just for me to live, but also to emulate to you, to teach to you, give you these words give you the ministry that God has blessed us, especially if you trust the anointing that's on my life. So many of you that have uh, that have that are watching me now and are on different platforms have different things going on, but mainly those of you that know me directly and how um, I was an impact in your life of the ministry being connected. Know that there's an anointing on my life for you to be blessed if you sow a seed, and I thank you right now for all of it. Is I bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great day today. Be blessed of God today. And all that you do today, don't forget to tell God thank you. Until we meet again, I want to thank God for you and your listening ear to be able to be a part of what we're doing here. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for our relationship. I love you. And you can't do a thing about it in Jesus' name. Bye-bye for now.